Lila Rossi is a phenomenal villain. Want to find out why? Well, keep watching. I got you. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's the one and only Your Girl, the Cartoon Hotspot, and we're back with another video where this time I'll be analysing the episodes Perfection and Protection. Since I am a bit late, I figured it's best to combine episode analysis into one video, similar to what I did with Reunion and Transmission. I'm just going to get straight to the point. I may have been wrong about Lila. Lila is a great antagonist. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts, well, stick around, give this video a thumbs up, and for new viewers, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that bell button for post notifications. Without further ado, let's begin. To briefly summarize perfection, the episode begins with Ladybug and Cat Noir talking about their feelings for their respective love interests, ignorant of the fact that they're actually talking about each other. However, Marinette is struggling to tell Adrian that she loves him, despite them acknowledging that the two do have romantic feelings for each other. Because of her inability to say the words, I love you, Marinette avoids Higami's phone call because she thinks she'll be disappointed by her inability to confess her love to Adrian. After numerous failed attempts by the class to get the love-struck idiots to get close together, Adrian decides to profess his love for her by singing her a song which was really, really sweet. Bro channeled his inner Luca for that. Thank you, Luca. <laughs> but because Marinette still has this mental block, she runs away and confides in Alia, in which she states that she thinks being Ladybug is getting in the way of her relationship. But Alia argues back and says she's just running away from her feelings. Overwhelmed, Marinette transforms into Ladybug to avoid her friends and especially avoid Kagami, who meanwhile has been tricked by Lila into interpreting Marinette's avoidance as a sign that she doesn't consider them as friends, leading to her accumulation. But of course, not all hope is lost as Ladybug devises a plan to send a message to Ryukomori, whereby the entire class showed their appreciation for her. It's through this heartwarming scene that Kagami breaks free from the Akuma, and at the end of the episode, Kagami tells Marinette that she feels unworthy of being her friend because she isn't perfect and hasn't quite grasped social cues yet. Marinette confesses that she too suffers from the same problem of wanting to feel worthy of her friendship and comes to the realization that the reason she's been struggling to confess her feelings to Adrian is because she doesn't deem herself worthy of love. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that Lila Rossi is a phenomenal villain, or at least now her potential is being explored, finally. And there's a reason why I chose to combine these two episodes into one analysis. Lila is manipulative, even more so than Gabriel. In the episode Protection, Kagami realizes that she still has feelings for Adrian, whilst Adrian is so obviously in love with Marinette, much to Tomo and Gabriel's dismay, who had plans for their children to become a couple. Whilst Gabriel tries to convince Adrian that Marinette isn't a perfect fit for him, Tomo attempts to dictate Kagami's feelings, and it works, causing her to confide in Lila and admitting that she wants to be happy for Adrian and Marinette, but just can't because of her own feelings. Of course, prior to this, Lila was already one step ahead as she had already formulated lies about Marinette being a liar and a manipulator to make Kagami be more wary of Marinette. Oh, the irony. Just as Kagami cries, Lila receives a call from Gabriel Agrest, who demands to know why Lila hasn't upheld her end of the deal in making sure Adrian is kept away from toxic people like Marinette. Lila reassures him that any moment from now, Kagami will fall victim to an Akuma. Now pay attention to her line of dialogue here. I believe you know Kagami Tsurugi? This young lady needs to be perfect so badly that she sees any emotion she might be feeling as weakness, and it's devastating every time. Lila just about summoned Kagami's entire character in like five seconds flat. Lila is just so good at reading people despite only meeting them. With just a few interactions, she's able to discern a person's weakness and use that to her advantage, all whilst painting herself as an angel or a caring person. Spoiler alert, she's not any of those things. I would say she's a better manipulator than Gabriel because Gabriel only manipulates people using a miraculous. The miraculous of transmission, whereas Lila is able to do that in her civilian form. Could you imagine what she'd be able to do with that same miraculous? But what sets Lila apart is how easy she can turn people against each other. If Marinette and Adrian learned that their love was hurting their friend, it would poison their relationship in the end. What a sad situation. 
don't you think? All that's left to do is wait then? Exactly. Just wait. You know the phrase, keep your friends close but keep your enemies closer? I think we can agree that Lila and Marina are definitely not friends. And by extension, neither is Adrian. But despite not being friends, she knows what kind of people Adrian and Marinette are. She knows they are highly empathetic people who put others' needs before their own. It's their most attractive quality and it's why they're drawn to each other. But it can also be a weakness, which Lila intends to exploit. By knowing their relationship leads to Kagami's akumatization, Adrian and Marinette are going to be wary because they deeply care about Kagami and would much rather see her happy, even at their own expense which is exactly why this happens. Wanna try again? I... I'm going to head home. You're not mad, right? I understand. It's all right. We have all the time in the world. Mm. <laughs> what also makes Lila an impeccable villain is just how calm and calculating she is. Lila doesn't mind playing the long game. She's got all the time in the world. Every one of her schemes is meticulous and carefully crafted. In a way, she's kind of a foil to Marinette, who also tends to come up with brilliant and carefully thought out plans. And she's incredibly patient. Lila doesn't let her emotions get the better of her because she knows how to play her cards right. I already have a video on Lila Rossi. And yes, I've seen your comments. Regardless, my point still stands in that video essay. The only thing that's really changed is the fact that I don't think Lila is wasted potential anymore. I haven't watched Revelation by the way, but I am aware it's a Lila-centered episode. So the plan is to talk more about Lila in my Revelation analysis video and then make another video essay on Lila when season 5 comes to an end because yes, I have seen the leaks and there's just so much to analyze so stay tuned. By the end of the episode, after Kagami is the akumatized, Marina encourages her to accept her emotions and feel them, rather than suppress them, because having emotions doesn't make you weak at all. Quite the opposite, actually. Adrian and Marina make it clear that they'll always be there for Kagami, and that she shouldn't listen to whatever lies Lila has been feeding her. And even then, Lila still manages to wriggle her way out of it and paint herself as the good guy, once again manipulating Kagami. The final thing I want to talk about is the subtle hints that Kagami is a senti being, just like Adrian. There's no denying it at this point, give it up guys, okay? Adrian and Kagami are senti beings. I'm planning to make an entire video on the senti being storyline and why it's so important to the overarching story. But in short, the way Tomo and Gabriel talk about their kids is very disturbing. It just makes me feel really uncomfortable. They talk about them as if they're objects because to them, they are. Now pay attention to what Gabriel says here. Kagami's perfect, but not perfect for me. You underestimate yourself. You and Kagami are of the same design. They don't see Kagami and Adrian as real people with actual feelings and actual emotions. What's interesting is that Tomo has been aware for a while that Gabriel is monarch. The two seem to have a bit of history as she claims that he owes her everything. In the past, however, Tomo seemed to be fine with Kagami getting akumatized, but notice how at the end of the episode, Perfection, she became enraged this time around. Why? Because Gabriel sent the Mega Akuma into Kagami's ring, which is where I'm suspecting Kagami's Amok is located. Either that or the ring is of sentimental value, who knows. But one thing's for sure, Marinette is getting in the way of whatever twisted plan Tomo and Gabriel have for their children. It's why Gabriel forbade his son from seeing her. I wanted to highlight how the theme of control is prominent in this episode, but there are two completely different intentions. One falling into the extreme end of the scale, whilst the other is morally grey. When Natalie finds out Gabriel ordered Adrian to not see Marinette, she hesitates but nonetheless gives him a counter order. Both are uncomfortable scenes to watch, but ultimately, Natalie means well despite quite literally controlling Adrian, even if it meant giving him more freedom. I think the point of this is to show that control can either limit you or set you free. I'll elaborate on this when I make a video essay talking about the importance of the Senti Monster storyline. And that about sums up these two episodes and brings us to the end of this video. I think Perfection and especially Protection is one of the strongest episodes I've seen so far. 
I really enjoyed the episodes and I'm glad Kagami is getting more focused this season. But of course, I want to put it to you guys. What did you think of these two episodes? Loved them? Hated them? Let me know down in the comments below. But as for today, that's it from me and I'll see you again next time.